In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your podcast into Apple Podcasts or iTunes, as it used to be called, in the easiest way possible. So if you're looking to get your show into iTunes, now called Apple Podcasts for quite a while now, but still referred to as iTunes a lot. So we're going to look at how to get yourself in there. Now, this is where you go to be able to submit your podcast to iTunes or Apple Podcasts. It's still called iTunes Connect because iTunes does exist as of the time I'm recording this, but Apple have announced very recently that they're getting rid of iTunes, actually. So... It'll be Podcast Connect that you go to anyway. Uh, so we'll update this in the description with the correct URL. But suffice to say, you'll be going to Podcast Connect. Just search Podcast Connect on Google and you'll find the right place to log in. Now, the important thing is that really once you log in to Podcast Connect, the first thing iTunes, Apple, whoever it is, are going to ask for is your RSS feed. So the first thing I want to do is show you how to get the RSS feed for your podcast so that you can submit that to Podcast Connect, to Apple Podcasts. That's the thing you're going to need. So that's usually the bit people struggle with because the actual submission process is really pretty straightforward. So let's go through a few of the common hosting providers. If you want to skip forward, just skip forward in the video through to when we go to Podcast Connect. But I'm just going to show you some of the hosting providers first. So let's look at Buzzsprout first. Buzzsprout is the one we tend to recommend most at the moment. Check out our best hosting article for totally up-to-date recommendations. But right now, Buzzsprout is great uh, and I expect them to be good in the future, of course. But do go to our hosting article if you want to have a look at what we're recommending right now as you watch this video. But if you log into Buzzsprout, then if you go to directories, so directories is the link right in the middle here. And then you'll see that there's a few different places here. So obviously iTunes, Apple Podcasts, they're only one of the options you'll be submitting to. You've got Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all the different options. But in Buzzsprout, you're going to go to Apple Podcasts and that'll actually link you directly to Podcast Connect because you'll get this page which shows you a way to do it and then submit to Apple Podcasts. Right, so the full instructions are here. What they recommend, and all of the different ones, all the different hosting providers will recommend as well, this is what you require. So make sure these are set up before you submit your podcast to Apple Podcasts or iTunes, okay? First, you've got to have a title. So that's the title of the podcast. You'll have that in there, bound to be there. Description, though, some people miss that out by accident. Make sure you've got a description in there too, I'll show you where to put these just in a sec. But these are all going to be input into your hosting provider. So whether you're with Buzzsprout, whether you're with Transistor, Libsyn, Blueberry, Podbean, whoever it is, you're going to put this into your hosting provider. That's where you put the details for your podcast so that it'll submit to Apple Podcasts, okay? But here's the ones. You've got title, description. You've got your artwork. You need good artwork in there. Apple recommends 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. That's a big image. It's going to be squashed down. Check out our artwork article on how to create good podcast artwork that works well small as well as blown up big. You'll find that at the link shown on the screen right here. So that's the podcast artwork article on thepodcasthost.com. Then you're going to look at categories. So categories, you can have at least one category, but you can put in up to three on any decent hosting provider. Again, I'll show you where these go in just a minute on Buzzsprout at least. Then you've got language. So what language is your podcast in? Is it English, French, Spanish, Chinese, whatever it might be? And then explicit or not. Is it a grown-up podcast? <laughs> are you swearing, talking about adult themes? Make sure you list that if you are. You can get in trouble if you don't. Now, certainly on Buzzsprout, you put this information in, in the settings area. So if I go to podcast settings, top right here, you'll see all of those things I just mentioned. So this is for PodCraft, our podcast about how to podcast. PodCraft, how to make and run a great podcast. That's the title. Then you've got the description. Not overly long, but make sure it's nice and descriptive. Then you're uploading your artwork. Then you've got the categories. And then the more important ones are, let's scroll on down, explicit, so explicit down at the bottom there. Tick that if it's going to be a grown-up show. 
and you'll find a similar settings page on every single hosting platform out there. So whether it's Transistor, Libsyn, Blueberry, Podbean, whoever it is you're working with, you'll have a podcast settings page that lets you input all of this data. Now, if you go over to directories, uh, go to Apple Podcasts. Let's have a look at this page again. Now, again, all you do is submit that to go to iTunes Connect. Now, the thing is, once we go to iTunes Connect, to Apple Podcast Connect, what it's going to do is going to ask for your RSS feed. So let's look at how to get that RSS feed. Okay, so on here in Blue, uh, in Buzzsprout, sorry, uh, we're in directories and we've got a link here on the right, the sub menu, which is called RSS feed. And that is what an RSS feed looks like. All it is is a web address. It's a web address that you put into Podcast Connect. So I can copy that directly and I'll put that into Podcast Connect in a minute. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. First, I want to go through a few of the other providers first. So if you're working with Transistor.fm, for example, another one of our recommended podcast providers. Here's our other show, Wadcraft, I'll put CrossFit. Uh, in here, you're in the Overview tab. And all you do is go over here to the RSS feed link on the right, click that, and again here is an, another example of an RSS feed. It's just a web address that has a bunch of data on it. If you want a quick look at what that looks like, let's show you here. That's what it looks like, a bunch of code. <laughs> so nothing very interesting, but that's what an RSS feed actually looks like in real life. So in Transistor, like I said, it's on the right here. RSS feed. Libsyn, another very popular host. What you do in Libsyn is go to destinations. So click on this destinations tab and you'll see all the different places you can publish to. But at the top, you've got Libsyn classic feed. So for hostile worlds, that's our show about space, uh, how to explore space and not how to explore space, uh, showing you, uh, teaching you all about space. Uh, so hostileworlds.libsyn.com forward slash RSS. So I would just copy that. URL, copy that, and that is what I'm going to paste into Podcast Connect. A final one I'll show you, uh, you could, uh, like I said, in every single podcast hosting provider, whether it's Podbean, whether it's Blueberry, whether it's anyone out there, they'll all have a page which is something like distribution, destinations, integration, and there it'll show you your RSS feed. And if you can't find it, certainly just get in touch with their support staff or pop it in the comments at the below this video and I should be able to link you to the right page within that hosting provider. We've got access to pretty much every hosting provider out there so I can give you the right link to wherever you are hosting. But a final one I'll show you is in PowerPress. So PowerPress is one that we work with a fair bit. PowerPress is Blueberry's WordPress plugin and we use that for integrating directly with a WordPress site. So if you use Blueberry as your hosting provider, plus the PowerPress plugin, it means that you can quite easily manage a podcast within your WordPress site, as opposed to managing it on the hosting site and then just embedding it. Uh, if you want more info on how that works, certainly have a look at our website course, which is over at thepodcasthost.com forward slash website. And that'll show you how you can build Blue, uh, Blueberry and PowerPress into a WordPress site to make it nice and easy to host your uh, your podcast right inside WordPress. Uh, to be honest, in most cases these days, you're as well going with something like Buzzsprout with Transistor, just using the hosting provider and then embedding the player into your WordPress. Uh, they're so easy and slick these days that it doesn't save you a lot of time working with PowerPress. But one example of why you might is why we're using it here. So our podcast host academy, uh, a bunch of courses, resources, support, live sessions that we run inside our academy. We have a members only podcast feed. So we use PowerPress to run a password protected podcast, a private podcast that only our members can get hold of. So if you're using PowerPress for something like that, or whether it's just for a normal podcast, if you go to the PowerPress settings on the left here, click on settings, you've got feeds in the tabs at the top here and the feeds uh, tab will show you all of the different feeds within your site. So usually there's just one. We've got a few here because we use it for some different stuff, but we've got our Academy Members podcast. This shows you the feed. So again, this is what I would copy. So copy that RSS feed. 
Okay, now we've got our RSS feed, time to submit it to Podcast Connect. So let's go over to Podcast Connect. So this is what it looks like. You search for Podcast Connect, it'll come up with the Apple site. We're gonna log in. So I'm just gonna type in my Apple account and I'm gonna log in here. Just log in there and then we'll be inside iTunes Connect. Might not be called this, like I said, but we're gonna end up inside Podcast Connect, okay? I'll keep updating the URL in the description of the video. So if it's not directly what it's uh, called right in front of you here, do pop down to the description below the video. You'll see where to go to get to Podcast Connect. So these are the shows inside my podcast. So inside iTunes Connect just now, Podcast Connect. Uh, so obviously we've got... Uh, a few shows we work with. We've got our own shows like Podcraft, Wardcraft, Hostile Worlds, all that stuff. So you can have a lot of podcasts in here. Now to submit a new one, if you've got none here at all, it's your first ever podcast or whether it's, you know, your 20th, all you do is go up here to the left, click that plus button. And it's simple as that. All you do is now type in or copy in that feed address that I just caught, um, talked about a second ago. So there we go, I've just pasted in our Hostile Worlds feed address, hostileworlds.libson.com forward slash RSS, and all I do is then click validate. Now, because I've already submitted this, it's gonna tell me, of course, you can't submit your feed if it was previously submitted, but yours is gonna be brand new, so you'll see all of this data, and it'll say, uh, validated, hopefully. It'll have a green light there saying validated um, or valid. You can check all the details here, which is great. So you've got the artwork, you've got all of the different data that we talked about a second ago, like the title, the description, you've got things like the copyright, the website link, all of that stuff. And it'll show you all of the uh, the episodes it's picking up as well. So you can make sure that the episodes you expect to be there are there. So if you've, for example, already done three episodes of your show, it's a good idea to maybe launch with a few episodes at least. If you've already got them up there, then... Um, you can check the iTunes, the Podcast Connect, Apple Podcasts. There's too many names here. It's picking them all up okay. Um, you can see it's picking up the duration, the date. So make sure they appear they're okay. If they're not, then obviously there's something you need to check with your feed. And that is essentially it. Then you would do validate. It would make sure, it would tell you that it sees a valid feed there. If it doesn't see a valid feed, if it sees something wrong with your feed, then it'll give you an error. It'll tell you a couple of things to look at. Generally, if you have problems with your feed, the best place to go is your hosting provider support team because they're the ones that actually deliver your feed. They're the ones that run your feed for you. So for example, if it's Transistor and it says it's an invalid feed, if you can't figure it out from the clue that Apple Podcasts give you about what's wrong, maybe you can fix it quite easily. Maybe you don't have a title, maybe you don't have artwork, for example. You can fix that yourself. But if it gives you something that you can't fix yourself, just get in touch with your hosting provider's uh, support team and they should be able to help you with that. They're the best placed to help you with a broken feed, okay? And then once that's done, you'll click Submit. And that will then say successfully submitted. And from there, it's up to Apple. Apple would then review it. Now, with iTunes, with Apple Podcasts, right now it's still uh, a relatively long review process. By that, I mean a couple of days at least. We've had feeds validated within a few hours actually before. Sometimes it's been really quick. Uh, I'm not sure what goes on behind the scenes, whether it's a human looking at it, whether it's an automatic process, but for some reason we jumped through the queue quite quickly then. Maybe it was quite a quiet period. Other days it has taken five or six days to be validated. So if you're submitting your feed and you want to hit a deadline, like you know you want to launch on say August the 1st, I would submit at least a week in advance of that. Now, it means it'll be live on iTunes a few days ahead of when you expect or when you want to launch properly, but there's no worries with that. You have it on live, you just don't promote it until your official launch day. But if you want to have it live on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts, by the time you know you definitely want to launch your podcast, make sure you're submitting it to iTunes a good bit in advance, by which I mean, I would say a week just to be safe. 
Now remember, if you want a full written guide to how to do this, either to revise it, go back to the steps, to have something to look back at, pop over to thepodcasthost.com forward slash Apple Podcasts, forward slash Apple Podcasts. And I'll show you how to submit to iTunes stroke Apple Podcasts. And if you want a full guide to the entire process of creating your show, creating the artwork, making sure your description's all good, creating those first few episodes, recording, publishing, editing, all of that stuff, you can find it in our How to Start Podcast Guide. You can find that over at thepodcasthost.com forward slash start and that will take you through every single step. Hold your hands through the entire process and make sure you can launch your show in the best way possible. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it helped you get your podcast into Apple Podcasts. I'll see you on a future one. 